Yo, it's your boy, Master Aubrey, live and direct. I have an interesting video and topic of discussion. It's going to probably be a three-part series, depending on how much information I get out in the first two parts. I might make it break it down just to two parts, but there's a lot that goes into this. So the topic of tonight's video is the Holy Spirit decoded. And we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit from another level, esoteric. So for you Christian folks, I need you guys to put on your thinking caps for this one. Conscious folks, you already know I'm about to drop the occult bomb on these niggas. I'm about to drop it esoteric nigga man style. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section below. I've done some notes. And we're going to talk about it, and I'm going to go through the notes. Holy Spirit versus Kundalini, all right? So Kundalini energy is a sexual energy. It's a sexual life force. It's the Kundalini is the serpent type of energy that is coiled up at the base of your spine. For you guys who study chakras, there's seven chakras in the body, seven wheels of light. The first chakra is the root chakra, which is at the tailbone, the coccyx, you know what. Um, that's where your genitals at, your asshole, shit. But that's where kundalini sits. And when kundalini energy is activated, it is a serpent energy and it, crawl, and it crawls up the spine. So I'm going to go to scriptures to show you where they were talking about kundalini energy and it has to do with the story of moses if you guys are familiar with the guy the prophet moses and the wilderness of when he was in the wilderness with the the hebrew israelites and they were getting bit by the snakes in the wilderness and god told him to put a put a pole put the snake on the pole where they were talking about rising up kundalini and I'm explaining because I wrote down. You could actually go to the Bible and read Numbers, the book of Numbers, which is Numbers 21, um, verse 8 through 9. And it says it right here. It says, And the Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it upon a pole. Put it up upon a pole. And anyone who is bitten can look at it and will live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake, looked at the bronze snake, they lived. So God told Moses to make a snake, his pole, you know, because he was able to do magic and all that, right? He said to make a snake, put it on a pole. Anyone who's bitten can look at it and will live. Now let's look at what a snake is symbolic of, because we're going to break it down esoterically. So that's why I told you Christian niggas to put on your thinking caps because I'm not talking about it from a literal standpoint. I'm talking about it from an alchemical, esoteric, occult perspective, right? The snake is symbolic of kundalini energy. Kundalini energy is a serpent energy. It's a sexual energy. Sex is symbolized by snakes. Snakes is symbolized of sexual energy, right? The pole in this content is the pole is the human spine, 33 vertebrates, right, in the, in the human spine. The pole, putting that bronze snake on the pole, right, is symbolic of kundalini energy rising up the human spine into the pineal gland in the brain, activating your pineal gland. I told you guys in a video where I told you um, how to raise sexual energy through masturbation, you guys can watch that video on my YouTube channel at Master Aubrey. How to activate your spiritual powers using masturbation. I've explained the, the techniques and how to do that. If you are ready for it. I'll, I'll explain later. But anyway, um, the pole is the human spine. So God told Moses to put a snake on the pole. Meaning he's telling Moses to raise his kundalini energy into the brain and this bronze snake when it reaches the top of the pole anyone who looks upon it will live meaning anybody who sees the light of that person who raises that kundalini 
they will live because we are living in the matrix, which the matrix is what? The illusion, right? Kundalini sits at the base of the spine. It's in the fleshly body of man, right? So you're raising up your sexual energy and it's going through the seven chakras. And as it's going through the seven chakras, it's purifying itself, right? So it could become a pure, chaste sexual energy, right? And what I wrote in my notes, it says, anyone bitten can represent an individual who has polluted, who's been polluted by their own carnal desires. So that's spilling of semen, which is fornication, sexual immorality of any kind, getting caught up in the, in the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life, right? Vanity, ego poisoning. So pre people who were bitten in the wilderness by the snakes, that is symbolic of ego poisoning. So that's why I told you guys to beware of when you're watching my video, you need to come at it from a new perspective. Do not attempt these practices if you are not ready because you will get ego poisoning if you do not develop self-discipline. So you have been warned in this video. And we're going to get into more details. That's why I'm going to make it a three-part video, right? Th those practices are required for people who are developing their spiritual growth and they have had kundalini experiences and they know what the fuck they're doing. If you are new to this, I suggest you study the rest of my videos so you know what type of mindset you need to have in order to work with kundalini energy. Because serpents, a serpent's nature, which is a snake... Their, their, their nature is violent. And anybody who's a snake tamer should know this. You got to come correct when you're approaching this energy. Yes, this is your own sexual energy. But at the end of the day, if you're ignorant of your own energy and the destructive parts of your energy, which we're going to discuss later on in this video, you're going to cause more harm than good. Because I know a lot of people are, are caught up in the hype of this new age shit where we always talk about being sexually liberated, but you don't understand the meaning of being sexually liberated. Y'all think that being sexually liberated means that you can fuck anybody and everything. And I'm going to give you a big disclaimer in this video. That's not what this video is about. This video is about the true understanding of sexual liberation. And it starts with your sexual energy. That's why I read it in the verse of Numbers 21, 8 through 9, where it says, no, the Lord says to Moses, make a snake and put it up on a pole, meaning rise up that kundalini. You're not trying to fornicate. You're drawing the sexual energy inwardly. You're not trying to fornicate because when you fornicate, it's expressing that sexual energy on an outward level externally. You don't want to express that energy externally. When you're going to rise the energy up, you're expressing your sexual energy inwardly. You're drawing it in. And that takes time and it takes practice and you have to learn certain techniques and you have to develop a certain mindset in understanding how to work with that energy. So nothing is built overnight. Rome is not built in a day. Okay, so that's what y'all that's what y'all niggas need to understand. I know you want to hear all that nice kundalini shit, but I'm gonna give you the big disclaimers in this video. Now I'm not those type of dudes that are gonna sell you a whole bunch of shit. I want to let you know what you're getting yourself into before you get yourself into it. So you can't say I never told you so, right? Now, um. This is what I wrote in my notes. So I'm just going based on my notes. To look at the snake on the pole and live. That's what the, that was the quote. It says to look at the snake on the pole and live means that when individuals learn how to properly sexually transmute their sexual energy and raise Kundalini up the right way with the humility of the Holy Spirit. I'm a, I'm a, I want you guys to listen to this. When you guys learn how to properly sexually transmutate your sexual life force with the help and guidance of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Yes, I'm throwing Jesus Christ in there. And you're going to see why. Right. 
with humility, right? You need higher guidance, your higher self, because Jesus Christ is your higher self. So calling on Jesus in this situation is very important because Jesus is your higher self. Jesus Christ is your higher consciousness, right? Crucifying their fleshly nature on the cross. The cross is symbolic of what? The physical body. You're crucifying your sin sensations because sin is connected to sensations, right? So when you lust or you fornicate or you have pride, vanity, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life, that is an outward expression of sexual life force. The inward reflection of the sexual life force is developing humility, love, compassion, positive virtues. When you're arrogant, self-righteous, um, judgmental of other people, this being narcissistic, that is a negative expression of the fire, which is the kundalini. You understand? So you got to know the inward journey versus the outward because this is what God said in his word. He said, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And you know the tongue is connected to the heart. For what's in the heart, you will speak it out. People speak what's in their heart. So if you have hatred and bitterness in your heart, you have a, you're expressing the negative of what, what the Holy Spirit is not. You're expressing the kundalini energy in a negative way because in your heart, all you have is darkness. All you have is bitterness. You feel what I'm saying? So in order for you to develop your Holy Spirit, you must develop positive virtues. For the Holy Spirit is positive. It's the positive, ver it's the positive energy or the positive aspect of kundalini. Kundalini has both positive and negative we're going to talk about the negative in a second, but Kundalini, which is Shati energy, is the Holy Spirit in positive virtue, meaning ascension. When Moses put that snake on the, on the pole and anybody who looked upon it lived, represents rising up the two twin snake serpents up the pole, Inga and Pingala, right? Right brain, left brain thinking, right? When you are able to rise your masculine and feminine energies up the spine, you awaken your consciousness, which is Christ. You are able to be a healer. So anybody look upon you, they will be healed because you have the light. You have the anointing, right? I've also written that down. And it says to be wise as serpents is telling us that when we awaken the kundalini energy and rise it up the spine, we will have Wisdom of a serpent because a, a serpent is, is, a, is a wise animal, right? It has wisdom. Now I'm going to talk about the negatives. Are you ready? This is from GnosticTeachings.org. So I had to go into Gnostic Teachings to get some of this information about the negative aspects of the Kundalini. All right? So this is what is called... The negative aspect of kundalini is called the kunda buffer organ. I know you guys probably never heard of that, but you go on Gnostic teachers that organ, look up kunda buffer organ. It's a whole story. It's a lot of information. I, I'm just going to pick apart what is necessary for this lesson, right? But you guys could go check that out on your own. And what I wrote in my notes is that the Kunda Buffer Organ is the negative development of the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Fire in man, right? So when you develop your powers in a negative way and you haven't developed your heart, that's why I've been telling you guys to address the affairs in your heart. You want to tap into supernatural abilities, but you haven't dealt with the, the darkness in your heart. You haven't dealt with the evil in your heart. You develop a kunda buffer organ, right? Which is known as the descending serpent. So when kundalini descends, when the serpent descends down the pole, instead of going up the pole like what the Lord told Moses or instructed Moses in Numbers 21, 8, verse, verse 8 through 9, where he tells him to put a snake on the top of the pole. And anybody that looks at it, they shall live. Now, the opposite of live is the devil. Right? So live spelled backwards is devil. 
And Nakunda Buffer Organ is the descendant serpent, the horrifying tale of Satan, which is what? The devil. You're living backwards. So to live backwards is to be trapped in spiritual bondage. All right? And when you're living in spiritual bondage, you're going to act out, you're going to act this spirit out in a negative way. We could say that the Kunda Buffer organ is a counterfeit spirit. The Holy Spirit is the original spirit. So when you start to live positive, you start to live righteous, you start to live with joy, love, humility, compassion in your heart, and you're developing these virtues in your heart. You're showing love to your fellow humans. You're showing love to your, your fellow brothers and sisters. You're learning how to Properly sexually transmute the energy in your genitals and raise it up the pole, which is the staff of Moses. Right? You are not only healing yourself, but you're healing the world because now you become like Christ. You, you become the light of the world. This is why Christ said, I am the truth, the way and the life. I am the bread of life. Because the sexual energy is the life force in man. He said, I am the living waters. Sexual energy is the sexual waters in man. When man learns how to work with his sexual energy and rising up the spine, he becomes the living waters. Or we can say the river of Jordan. In Egyptian mythology, we call this the Nile River. Right? So you see, I'm able to connect all of that because the Holy Spirit leads you into all truths. You can read it in scriptures. See it for yourself. So I'm not talking about truths just based on the Bible, but the Holy Spirit will guide you into any information you come across because the Holy Spirit will be able to decipher the information correctly and to give it to your fellow man, right? So I was able to connect this through channel with, with um, talking about the Kuna Buffer organ. I was able to connect this through channel Based on the scripture I just gave you, which was Numbers 21, 8 through 9, where it says to the individuals that were bitten by the snakes in the wilderness, that was a representation of the Kunda buffer. These people were getting bit in the wilderness by the snakes is because they were fornicating. The wilderness is symbolic of planet Earth, what we do on planet Earth. So right now, every one of us that's watching this video, right, we are in the wilderness, the wilderness can represent different things for different individuals. That's what I need you guys to understand. So when you're getting bit by the snakes in the wilderness, it's because you're falling temptation to lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. That means you're catering to the world. That's why Christ said to be in the world, but not of the world. So to be in the world and, and be of the world, you're going to get bit by the snakes in the wilderness. Get it now? So, and the body of desire, this is what the Kuna Buffer represents. The body of desire, the fleshly body of man. Also, there was also channels that were included and based on the channels that was given here on GnosticTeachings.org. There, this, this story connects to the Adam and Eve story. Where Adam and Eve was in the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden it is connected to um, Atlantis and Lumeria. For you conscious folks who study Atlantis and Lumeria. Atlantis and Lumeria is the land of the gods. So you could say that the Garden of Eden is the land of the gods. Because that's where Adam and Eve was created by gods. Right, which is Elohim, which is plural, which is gods and goddesses. Right, so the the angels, the, the the higher celestial world created the Garden of Eden, put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. This is Atlantis and Lemuria. Okay, this is about you could connect Atlantis and Lemuria to the story of Genesis. Right, the whole story of Genesis, basically the story of Atlantis and Lemuria, even getting down to Sodom and Gomorrah. Because God, um, he repented because man was becoming evil in their ways. And I'm going to link this to something that was said in this. Because I got, the, I got the, um, the site turned up right now. And it says, I'm going to connect the Bible to this passage that's in this um, website. 
right? It says the Lumerian root race, right? The Atlantis Lumerian root race, right? Let me, let me, give me a second, my niggas, right? Let me write this. Let me read this part, first part to you guys. It says, many millions of years has passed since the terrifying night of the past, which we begin to slowly evolve and devolve. Yet the human being does not know who he is, where he comes from, nor where is he going. That's how we are today. We don't know where we're from. We don't know where we're going and, and who the hell we are. We trying to be everything under the sun. Double-minded people. Okay. A liturgy of many centuries weigh over the ancient mysteries, yet the verb still awaits at the bottom of the ark for the instant of its realization. Behind the Eden tradition, there are a terrible cosmic um, era, which will frighten and horrify those who are reading this shit. So since the Garden of Eden, man has been in error. This is a terrible cosmic error. They say the gods also make mistake. Now, how is this true? Well, let's link it to scriptures. Then God repent that he created man in the days of Noah. He repented and he said that man would turn the evil in their ways. So let's connect this to the Lemur let's, let's, let's connect this to the Lemuria story. And it says, Thus today, at all times, we are confronting our own destiny. We face the psychological we, yeah, we face the psychological dilemma to be or not to be. So we're in a place of a psychological, a psychological dilemma, right? And this is where we're getting this double-mindedness from, where we're choosing whether to follow God or not to follow God. You understand? To obey or not to obey, right? And it said... um. All the efforts made by the prophets, the avatars, and the gods in order to end this harmful consequence of the, the Kunda Buffer organ has been in vain. Right? So you have all these prophets that have come to warn you niggas of your destruction. Noah was one of them. He warned humanity of destruction. Humanity failed to comprehend. And they were destroyed by the flood. Right? Jesus came to warn you guys and he died on the cross. But it seems like you guys are not respecting his death because you still sin. You think that because he died on the cross for your sins, you're saved and, and everything is okay. But you're not respecting his death. You feel what I'm saying? You're not trying to change his way. Yes, he could forgive you. Yes, he, he, he died on the cross for your sins. We can look at this symbolically as well. But at the end of the day, you still have to make up your mind. Who will you serve? God or mammon can't have it both ways. This is why you're in this dilemma. And this is part of the part of the situation is this Kunda Buffer organ, which is the horrifying tale of Satan, the descending serpent. You must rise the serpent up in order to ascend. To ascend is meaning to be delivered. So you need some deliverance, my people. You need to ascend. You need to rise up to be saved. Our salvation is ascension. We talk about this in the new age community. We're, we're ascending. We're rising up in vibration. The Christian is going to call it being delivered and, and, and salvation. And Jesus is going to come back for us. The, 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 the new age community is going to say the Anunnaki's is coming back for us. I choose to be neutral and look at it holistically and say all of this is real. Why? Because they all have some truths to this shit. Now, as you, as the man or the individual that's watching this video, I want you to use your Holy Spirit and discern what is real and what is false. I'm not here to convince you of anything. I just bring this. I just bring the information to you. You're gonna trust in your inner God, your inner Jesus Christ, which is your higher self, to decode and decipher this information. Because based on what I'm saying in this, looking at this, this website, GnosticTeachings.org, and they're talking about the, the error that the divine beings made in the Garden of Eden, which is Lumeria, and how they gave humans this, this, this horrible thing 
which is called the um, Kuna buff, the Kunda buffer organ, right? This is the reason why humanity is in decline and degeneration. And in order to reverse the process, we must understand what the Kuna buffer organ is. And I'm going to read more of this. It says, it is necessary to know that the Kuna buffer organ is the negative development of the holy fire. This is the descending serpent which perpetuates itself from the coccyx. Remember I told you, Kundalini sits at what? Your coccyx, your tailbone, your asshole. Right? It perpetuates itself from the coccyx downwards towards the atomic infernals of the human being. Meaning, ascending, you're growing a tail. I'm pretty sure you've seen Caucasian babies on YouTube or social media with tails. They're growing tails out of their spine. You ever seen those pictures with them kids or those white boys that got tails and shit? Well, that's a Kunda buffer organ. That's a Kunda buffer organ. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's the horrifying tale of Satan, which is shown in the body of desires of the intellectual animal. Humans are an intellectual animal. Um, who is in the present time falsely called man. Right. What is worse? Which hurts the soul the most? Is to know that the ones who gave the Kunda buffer organ to this humanity were some sacred individuals. Now we're going to link this back to Adam and Eve. Get your Bibles. Well, then Satan tempt Adam and Eve at the at the tree of good and evil, giving them a choice, said, Hey, if you eat from the tree of good and evil, you will be like gods, right? So it says, What is worse? What hurts the soul the most? Is it to know that the ones who gave the Kunda Buffer organ to this humanity were some of the sacred individuals? Well, Satan is a serpent. He came as a serpent. We're talking about the Kuna buffer organ, which is talking about the negative development of the Kundalini, which is serpent energy. It descends down the spine and into the atomic infernals, into the hell realms. That's why when you look at a devil, he has a long tail. The tail is symbolic of the Kuna buffer organ. Okay? Ancient traditions state that during the Lemurian epoch, that means an era. Epoch means error. Certain sacred individuals, where they're talking about divine beings, talking about the Elohims, right? Came to earth in a cosmic astral ship, which we know is the Anunnaki's and all that other shit, right? And remember, Satan and Satan and his angels fought against Archangel Michael, Michael or Michael, right? And his army was one third of of God's army that rebelled against God and his army. So Satan, this was all happening around the Lumerian epoch, right? These individuals were forming a very high sacred commission that was entrusted with the studying in evolving and devolving promise of the earth and its humanity. So angels, these celestial beings, they've always been Aiding humanity in their evolution or de-evolution. Though the beings that are aiding us in our evolution, we'll call them angels or deities, divine beings. The ones that are aiding us in our devolving are our fleshly desires, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Or we will call demonic forces, negative forces that's opposing to humanity. What was Satan opposing to humanity? He didn't like humans. You know what i um, So we could look at it from that level as well. I'm not going to get into all these names because this is some new age shit. And honestly, I'm not really into new age shit. And you might not know these names. And there's some weird names. But I've given you the biblical understanding so you guys could get it on that, on that childlike level as well. Um, let me see. They said the sacred commission of... These divine beings are behind the whole drama of Eden. They have came with the bodies of flesh and bone. Their ship landed in Lemuria, which you could call the Garden of Eden. During that ancient age, the human instinct was starting to develop itself into objective reasoning. That's what that in that part. Let's let's say that again. During that ancient age, the human instinct was starting to develop itself into objective reasoning. Stop. Let's go back to Genesis. When God created Adam, 
right? Before he split him into Eve, right? He's having Adam name all the beasts in the field. And he will bring the, the, the Elohim will bring the beasts to Adam and have them name all the animals on earth, right? So this is that same situation right here, just written out by whoever wrote this shit. They were saying that, um, they said that these beings were behind the whole drama of Eden, right? They came with the bodies of flesh and bone. They landed, they ship landed in Lumeria, which is the garden of Eden, planet Earth. During that ancient age, the human instinct was starting to develop itself into objective reasoning. Think for itself. This very high commission could very could verify that the the Eden human being was starting already starting to suspect the reason for his creation. So Adam started developing consciousness. He wanted to know why he was created. Who is his creator? What is life? That's like how we come into consciousness. We ask, why are we here? Is this place real? Are we are we flesh or are we spirit? Are we more than this? So when we come into consciousness, we start questioning. We come from a place of objective reasoning, right? And um, they said the Lumerian root race has started to guess their to guess the true motives of its own existence. A miserable existence with just mechanical motives. Each human being is a little machine who caps who captures. And transform cosmic energy. So the whole purpose of a human being. Right? Your body. Your fleshly body. This is what they're talking about. Each human being is a little machine. Organic machine. We're organic. We came from the ground. From the ground we rise to the ground we go to. Right? It captures and transforms cosmic energies. Heaven is above. I taught you guys this in Qigong. Heavenly energies are above. Earthly energy are are below. Man is a transmutator of heavenly heaven energies and earth energies. Cosmic forces are around you. Okay? So when you absorb cosmic energy, you're absorbing what's around you. When you're absorbing heavenly energies, you're absorbing it from your crown chakra and you're absorbing it from the heavens above. The stars, the galaxies, the cosmos, all that. Earthly energies is Mother Earth. When you put your feet in the ground, you absorb energies from the earth realms below. So you're absorbed. You're a machine that absorbs energies, right? This is what else they said. They said... Then he unconsciously adapts these energies into the interior layers of the earth. Thus, we are human machines and nothing else. What would this world be without the human machines? So remember back, let me bring it back to Genesis now. Remember in the beginning when God created man in his image and likeness and he's given us authority on the earth? Well, our authority on the earth is to be trans. To transmute energies, cosmic forces. We are used as vessels. We are vessels for higher forces. This is why people are walk-ins. This is why you have walk-ins. This is why you have people that get demonically possessed. You could be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Or you could be possessed by counterfeit spirits. This is why the battle was never about flesh. This is what the Apostle Paul talked about. In Ephesians, he said, I put on the full arm of God, for we do not wrestle against flesh and bone, but spiritual principalities in high places. So the battle was always over your soul, man's soul, and who would control the vessel. You know what I'm saying? Whether you give that control over to God, your creator who created you. Or you give it over to Satan and his army. The beings who gave you the Kunda Buffer organ and fuck up humanity. Your choice. You choose what you want to do. Okay? Um, without this seal, which is supplied by this humanity, the planet will be without a purpose. So we give life. We, we are the reason why life is the way it is. God gives us rules. That's why God gave his commandments, the Ten Commandments, the 42 laws of my art, so on and so forth. 
When we don't execute God's laws on the earth, we're not living out our purpose. You get it now? So when you go against God's word, you're going against your, your nature as a human being, your organic machine. You transmute negative forces into positive forces in order to continue life here on earth. We are earth angels. You feel what I'm saying? We are angels of earth. Just like how they got the angels in the heaven, our dominions on earth. No one could come through here but through us. That's why spirits need legal rights. That's why spirits need covenants. A spirit cannot intercede on our behalf without our consent. Get what I'm saying? Say they need you to consent. This is why they come to you in the dream and they talk to you in the dream and they try to form covenants. God is a God of covenants. That's why he came to Abraham when he was Aham. I forgot. Let me, let me say that word again. Abraham, right? And the name with his name before he was called Abraham. You know what I'm trying to say. I got tongue twisters and shit. I don't give a fuck. But when he made a covenant with Abraham, he said, I will make you the father of all nations. The only way that God can make Abraham a covenant is that he had to talk to him in the dream state. You got to read the story of Abraham so you can know what I'm talking about. And to make a sacrifice. Right? Because Abraham was going to sacrifice his son, um, Isaac, right? On the, on, the, um, on the altar. And God saw that he was going to do that. And the angel of God stopped Abraham and said, that was enough. You prove your loyalty. Right? And I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Right? God is a spirit. And what I said before, spirits need to make covenants in order to continue their will. God's will is executed through man. We execute God's plans on earth. We execute God's laws on earth. So if God had a purpose for Abraham, the only way that he could execute his plans for Abraham is actually talking to him through the dream state and forming covenants. Right? So... Man being a machine, man has dominion over the earth because that's what God did. God gave man the free will to dominate the earth. And based on our free will, we could choose either to subdue the earth or destroy the earth. And remember, the fight is over your soul. So whoever is possessing your body is either going to create or destroy. You know that if you're being under demonic possession, you're going to destroy people and, and destroy the world. But if you're under... The Holy Spirit, right, which is your higher self, higher nature, you're going to bring love, peace, joy, and 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 to not only to yourself and healing to the world, but healing to everything and everybody, because that is God's laws and that is God's will for man to be prosper. He said to be fruitful and multiply, right? But Satan's agenda would be to be destructive and do it thou wilt. Feel what I'm saying? And this this is why I'm this is what I'm trying to break it down for you. I'm going to get into more of this, but this is just part 1. I'm going to try to get more channels throughout the week. I probably won't get back to another video no time soon, maybe tomorrow, I don't know. Depends on how I feel and what channels I get. But if you guys have any questions based on what I said, to a lot of people, it might seem like I was all over the place, but no. If you rewatch this video, you will get an idea that is not all over the place. It's it's I'm channeling, and it will make sense to you once you digest the information that I'm giving to you. And this and this, when you watch all three parts, then it's gonna make a lot of sense to you because there's a lot more that I gotta explain to you. I'm just scratching the surface. But this was channeled to me earlier today. I discussed this with my spirit. And he approved of it. He said, before you do this, I need you to do your homework first. I don't want you to talk about this and you're not coming at it correct. So I made sure I went to certain websites and got certain information. 
so I can line it up with information. So if you think I'm just channeling out my ass and not lining it up with information, then you got to twist it because I am lining it up with information that you could go look at, look at it up for yourself. You could go to the Bible because that's where I pull in my resources from. I always pull my resources from the Bible. And you could go to GnosticTeachings.org and look up on the story of the Kunda Buffer organ and do your own research. I urge you guys to do your own research. I don't want you to sit here and take word for word of what I'm saying. I want you to discern with your spirit if I'm telling you facts or some bullshit. All I'm doing is just bringing the information. You either accept it or you don't. But with that being said, you guys have a beautiful night. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.